Apple unveiled its most ambitious hardware product since the iPhone, the Apple Vision Pro, a mixed reality headset controlled by your hands, eyes, and voice. The headset has a variety of uses, from watching movies to browsing the web to FaceTime, and unlike other headsets, it has a feature called EyeSight that makes the user's eyes visible from outside the device. However, it's very expensive. The Vision Pro will cost $3,499, even more than analysts had expected, and nearly 12 times the price of Meta's Quest 2 headset. Apple shares briefly hit an all-time high the morning of the announcement, but soon dipped and closed the day down 0.8%. Scott, last week you predicted this headset would be one of the biggest tech failures and that it would be the final nail in the coffin for the AR VR headset category as a whole. Now you've seen the product, uh, where do you stand? It's impossible not to think that any product that Apple launches on that day doesn't have a real shot at success. First of all, every product they've launched in this millennium has gone on to be just a seminal consumer product globally, whether it's AirPods, the iPod. I mean, everything they do kind of is gold. A lot of people says, well, a lot of people would argue, well, that means this will work. I would argue it means that this is likely to fail because I think reversion to the mean is the most powerful form, is, the, is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. In addition, you know, very highly produced, you know, a, a hard to be not be excited, but I, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns here. I think this thing uh, doesn't work. And I just, just as like, can we all admit that crypto uh, outside of a couple things with mostly a levered Ponzi scheme, can at some point we just admit that people don't want to put shit on their head? And I think it's just a violation of basic anthropology. And that is the only things we will put on our face are devices that make it less likely we will be eaten because we can see and or make money because we can read, that is glasses, or that make us more likely to have a random sexual encounter because they increase the elevation of our cheekbones, which makes us more attractive to mates. The beauty industry is, you know, it's one of the biggest consumer industries in the world. And it's all about looking younger and being more attractive to mates. The eyeglass industry is essentially survival. You can't you know, you can't drive, you can't survive, you're more vulnerable, you can't read, you can't be economically viable without certain glasses. That's it, full stop. The idea of putting this thing on your head, uh, one, blocking your peripheral vision, which I think makes people feel vulnerable. They can't see the things that could eat you and the things you could eat uh, never came right at you. They came at your sides or were uh, in the forest to your side. So we get nauseous when we don't have peripheral vision. I think people get hot in it. And also, I just want to be honest, I have a bias here, and I, I'm really freaked out that people of your generation are slowly but surely being sequestered from each other and life in general through these reasonable facsimiles of the real world on Coinbase, on YouPorn, on Twitter, on Netflix, on Tinder, that essentially creates lower risk, lower calorie life. And that people have less and less reason to not only leave their home, whether it's Zoom or whether it's a dating app, and less reason to engage with people, endure the rejection such that ultimately they can understand the victory of real friendship, of real mentorship, and um, real romantic partnerships, and develop the skills that they need for the rest of their lives. And also, I think it just makes people more depressed. And whether you're an orca, whether you're a dog, the worst thing you can do with a mammal is to sequester it. Leave your dog alone. See how he or she reacts. Put an orca in a tank alone. We are not meant to be alone. We're not meant to have anything getting in the way of our ability to look each other in the eyes. And I feel like this is a yet another step that sequesters uh, humans and mammals uh, from one another. The great social distancing that created depression among our teens wasn't COVID. It was social media. Depression levels are where they would have been without COVID. So I just, I find all of this trend, whether it's shooting people to Mars or into a metaverse and these devices and these platforms, really disappointing. I also think it's a no man's land in terms of a price. At 3,500 mm -hmm. bucks with sales tax, you're up towards four grand. And I would imagine the technology here is so cutting edge that it gets perishable pretty fast. So the way I look at stuff is, 
the useful life of a product. A computer costs a thousand bucks now, it lasts four years, five years, you're losing 200 to 300 bucks a year. A pair of sunglasses costs you 200 bucks, hopefully hold on to them for five years, that's 40 bucks a year. This thing, I can't imagine this thing isn't going to be outdated within 12 months. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt, let's say 24 months. So mm-hmm. it's 2000 bucks a year to have a headset. It just feels, yeah, I think once you get above, once you get to this weight class in terms of price, it needs to be more enduring technology. I mean, you're getting to the point now at 2000 bucks a year, that's the cost of a lease on a Toyota or a Hyundai. So what do you want? Do you want a Hyundai or do you want a mixed reality headset from Apple? So I, I think this is now, if you look at Apple, if you did the kind of consensus estimate and you looked at their strength, their staying power, their capital, their brand, you think, okay, they could commercialize this. This might be sort of GPS was initially for guidance systems of rockets such that we could target uh, objects and people within six feet. And then it it there was this technology dividend or piece dividend and GPS ended up going everywhere. And maybe spatial technology or some of the optics that they're figuring out will be disseminated down to lesser products. But I think headsets in general, just like crypto, I think it's time we had a funeral for these things. What if it weren't a headset? What if it weren't clunky and hot and perhaps nauseating? Though I don't know if anyone has said that it actually is nauseating this one. Uh, But what if it were, what if it looked like the Google Glass? You just wear the thing, you're free, you've got your peripheral vision, uh, and it has all of the same features, and you use your hands and your eyes to select things, and it basically just works as a phone, that is an interface, that you just see in front of you. Do you Game think that changer. Works? Game changer. I think yeah. that works. I think if I can yeah. put on a pair of effectively Ray-Bans or you know um, Oliver People's sunglasses or whatever it might be, right? or Persol's, and it has this sort of technology built into it, game changer. Mm -hmm. But I think if you could put something on that had utility against the sun and made you look good and made you more social and more attractive, boom, you're in. I I think, but supposedly the technology just isn't there, that that it's, Mm -hmm. that that we're about, we're about a decade away. Yeah. And finally, last year we wrote this post where we tried to picture what Apple would need to do if it hit a trillion dollars in revenue, which no company has ever done. Um, We suggested a lot of different categories. We said banking, search, health, fitness, home products, also cars. Um, Apple trades at 30 times earnings. If you compare that to Tesla, Tesla trades at 66 times earnings. We did not mention headsets or spatial computing or VR. But if you were Tim Cook, what would you be focusing on? Three things, a car, a car, and a car. (laughs) <laughs> I just think that Tesla has opened up. Tesla has taken a low margin manufacturing based business to a high margin software based business. And that all spells Apple. And the ultimate self expressive yeah. product is probably, other than where you went to college, is probably your car. It says a lot about you. And then maybe number three is your watch. And the car is so self expressive in terms of what it says about you for so many people, not as much for people your generation, but people my generation. Mm-hmm. And I think the most valuable waiting list ever assembled would be the day that Tim Cook announces a car and opens a waiting list. And he, I think there are a ton of automobile manufacturers with excess capacity that would partner with Tim Cook and you know, co-pilot on the design, an electric vehicle that had some autonomous technology. I just, I, I buy one. I think anyone who makes over a certain amount of money would mm-hmm. get on that waiting list. I think it'd be the mother of all waiting lists and the auto industry, there are just very few industries that move the needle for Apple. And the automobile industry is one of the biggest in the world. And I think Tesla is ripe for disruption. The disruptor should be disrupted. Its design to me has gotten stale. I don't think their products look especially appealing relative to the, I think it was a truly differentiated design six, seven years ago. There's a sameness now around Tesla. And I think Apple has, uh, and specifically Tim Cook, because brands get personified, has such a better brand, I think, right now than Elon Musk and Tesla. So I would have just Mm -hmm. loved to have seen Apple. And they still might. They still might. Um, They announce a car. I think overnight, you know, they're doing 10, 20, 30 billion in sales and they iterate around it. And 
um, you know, the ultimate self-expressive benefit product is no longer your watch uh, or your iPhone. It's your it's your car again. So mm -hmm. I, I think that should go into the car. How about you? What do you think? Completely agree. Um, I mean, you look at the sales of this headset, it's projected to do 150,000 units in its first year. If you assume those projections are correct, that means that the headset's going to bring in $525 million. That's 0.1% of Apple's annual revenue. Apple makes $395 billion a year. So, I mean, it better be the greatest long-term play of all time because based on its first year, this is going to do absolutely nothing to the company. Um, and I think that's going to be reflected in the stock. I mean, we saw the stock come down after the announcement. Um, but yeah, I would agree with you. I think the call is a good idea.